Whoa. All right, what's going on guys? In today's video, we're gonna be reviewing the Elegoo Mars. Elegoo was nice enough to send us one, so uh, let's pull it apart, see what's inside, and maybe even talk about some uh, upgrade options. Let's get into it. I have a wonderful electronic invention I want you to see. <laughs> it looks something like this. It's just some accessories. And quite a few accessories at that. It's nice to see some flush cutters included. And you know, face masks are hard to come by these days, so that's nice. And if you were wondering if your Anycubic resin bath would fit, it sure does. All right, I normally don't get too much into software on these things, but I was pretty impressed with this, other than the, the name. Uh, yeah, I'll let you guys pronounce that one. I'm not even gonna try. Uh, but the software itself actually is really good. Uh, first of all, you notice the very clean user interface. You guys know how I feel about UI at this point. Um, but it's also extremely functional. One of the things I've always had a problem with on some of this software is the window scaling doesn't work right. This is a 4K screen and sometimes the UI elements end up to be absolutely tiny. Uh, but this does all the scaling properly, which is great. It also has some really nice features like the shell feature, which I'm a big fan of, and it seems to do it really well. This is like a shell thickness of one or two millimeters, uh, and that's totally automated. You just click a button. Uh, when you shell an object, you wanna puncture a few holes in it because otherwise it's gonna fill up with uncured resin and that's a bad day. So I've uh, I put a few holes in there. That was actually really easy to do. Also, uh, the automatic support structure generator is pretty good, but I actually placed all of this support structure manually. The autogen works well for organic models, but for more of the engineering and, and hard edge models like this, it makes more sense just to place them manually. Uh, and this only took me a few minutes, so that was easy. All right, enough talking about it. Let's, uh, let's print some things. You guys know the drill by now. Let's pull this apart. You gonna help? All right. All right, yeah, nothing too unexpected in this assembly. Uh, it's kind of beautifully simple. <laughs> These machines really aren't very complicated. Uh, you've got a 12 volt DC to DC buck converter here that powers the LED array uh, that uh, shines through the LCD screen. A little power distribution, you've got your input, a power switch, and the uh, USB input. I do kind of wish these weren't in the back of the machine. I always thought it was strange that they put them in the back. Although to be honest, looking at this, that would be a pretty easy modification if you were so inclined. Uh, and then you've got your uh, main driver board here. It's, uh, it is pretty simple, looks nicely laid out. 
you've got your display driver here. That's going to almost always be the biggest chip on the board. Uh, a little ARM processor that's running your firmware and all the motion control stuff. That's probably just running a version of Gerbil, some G-code interpreter. Uh, under this heatsink is going to be your uh, motor driver for the Z-axis. Input for the homing switch on the Z. Little piezoelectric speaker uh, for it to beep at you. But other than that, I mean, real basic, the rest of this is pretty much just power control. Uh, it seems like a lot of people kind of make a big deal about making um, complicated LED arrays or, you know, doing something to... Uh, to diffuse that layer of light. I, I really haven't seen it make any difference on the quality of a print before. Uh, so I think this is just fine. Uh, the overall construction is nice and solid. Uh, you can tell they really optimized for the uh, minimum amount of aluminum and CNC work that was necessary, but they did it in a nice job. It's really clean. Uh, the fan's a little loud. Again, that could be something you change in the future if you want. Uh, it's not bad by any means, but it's the loudest part of the machine. So, you know, if you put like a big 120 millimeter fan in there, like a Noctua, something quiet, that'd be pretty nice. You've got your little touch screen here. Um, I think these are pretty standard too. I don't think there's anything special about these. They're off the shelf components. Uh, this one was nice and responsive though. You remember from my last review of the longer printer, the responsiveness of the touch screen wasn't great. Uh, this one seems much better, no complaints there. And then of course you've got your uh, main LCD display. Uh, I'd love to know the story behind these because they're really all identical from all of the ones that I've taken apart so far. They're like a standard 2K resolution. They must have come off of a tablet or a phone or something. Uh, I can't imagine they were custom fabbed for these and just everyone used the exact same one. Uh, but, you know, I don't know. Story there, I'm sure. Um, decent uh, stepper motor, pretty standard as well. And of course, the Z-Rail. Uh, that's the one thing you'll notice. I always complain about these 3D printers. Uh, you know, it's the one moving part in the whole machine, and you'd think they'd opt for a nice, solid uh, motion rail there, you know, one of the linear bearing ones. But they always put these kind of cheaper aluminum extrusion solutions in there. Uh, and, you know, I guess to be fair, they're not terrible. Uh, and they last for a while uh, if they're properly tuned from the factory. Uh, this one definitely was. Uh, it was nice and tight. I, I will say, kind of with a disclaimer, that, um, you know, when a company sends me a unit for review, there's always a chance they went and picked the best one they could. So, you know, consider that in my review. But I will say the one I received was nice and tight. Uh, here's your uh, little linear rail system they use. It's just three bearings, uh, and one of these bearings is on a little cam so that it can be adjusted in and out to apply pressure to the other side of the rail. Again, they, they work fine to start with. They always tend to loosen up a little bit, though. That's that's my biggest complaint. You know, I don't know. Maybe if they're Loctited in place, they'd last a long time, but I've never had good luck with them. They did use anti-backlash nuts in there, which I always appreciate. Uh, that being said, uh, if you watched our Anycubic uh, review videos and you've seen my linear rail conversion kit that we sell, uh, yeah, this is going to be super easy to modify for use on this one. It's not identical, so don't go out and buy one for the Anycubic and expect it to work on this. Uh, but I will be releasing a version for the Elegoo in the near future. And we'll go ahead and do a video on the installation of that. So stay tuned. But other than that, um, pretty standard. Let's put this thing back together. All right, well, I think this is probably one of the best resin printers that we've uh, looked at so far. Um, you know, with the one exception of the linear rail system, which I think the longer did a little better job on. Uh, but for me, I don't really weight that very high because tomorrow I'm just gonna change it out for one of our adapters and linear rail systems, and it's not gonna be a big deal after that. But the industrial design, the aesthetics, the functionality is all really, really good. Also, if you want a discount for the Elegoo Mars, they've been nice enough to supply me with a coupon code that is in the description. We had a little catching up to do, so we're gonna read a few comments from the chip tray. Sounds good. Uh, Sergerich? Holy Brussels sprouts, Batman, my wave is still around. The things you learn, <sighs> the more you know. Yeah, I swear, I'm learning Blender, I swear it. A Beachboard fan asks, uh, what? How is that acting like an air bearing? Of uh, physics-wise, basically, it's a fluid. If you can trap it in a very small area, it floats. 
Yeah, it's just some of that air is escaping, but uh, it's it's such a, a narrow gap for it to get under. It, it yeah. does it pretty slowly. And since the edges are curved, you actually end up trapping a little more air under as you move. Mm -hmm. uh, Jamie Vela was wondering, what brand is that 3D Touch Probe? Oh yeah, link in the description. I really like that thing. So when is the homemade pick and place robot project starting? <laughs> oh, we've talked about that mm -hmm. so many times. One day. Yeah. I look forward to your videos more than this old Tony's. Stan says, is it bad to hope you guys have to stay in the shop a few or a couple extra weeks because of coronavirus? <laughs> like, I mean, you know, worldwide pandemic, yeah, yeah. Uh, watching a few more YouTube videos. But Good news. We were in the shop. Bad news. It wasn't all videos. Yeah, we've been so. working on a lot of stuff that aren't videos lately. Yeah. Uh, more to come on that. Uh, it's going to be some pretty exciting stuff in the future that you guys do get to see. But right I now, hope so. It's a little bit in the background. All right, uh, make, make Something asks, what fluid are you using in the ultrasonic cleaner? Oh, it's just isopropyl alcohol, 99%, mm -hmm. uh, which normally is no big deal, at least in America, to buy. Right now, it's going for like 50 bucks a gallon. It's kind of ridiculous. What was it before, like 25? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. All right, uh, next we're going to talk about some of the comments from the last two uh, CNC videos where we talk about software. And before I start with that, let me preempt kind of the Linux CNC questions and you should have just used Linux CNC. Uh, I'm sure you're right. Linux CNC, once it's installed, is probably rock solid and fantastic other than its crappy UI, which we can talk about later. Uh, but the installation process for anything in Linux is not simple. I don't, I don't care what you say. The more times you try and convince me, the more times I know I'm going to be in the terminal typing 15 commands I don't understand before it works right. And if any of them don't work, I don't have a clue what to do. Short answer is, I'm too stupid for Linux, at least right now, <laughs> <laughs> and we'll work on it later. Terminal commands are not a user interface. Okay. Are you, <laughs> you okay? Can we move on? <sighs> yeah. Woosa. Woosa. Yeah, four years, man. So, Woo. Oh, question one, Linux CNC and don't look back. <laughs> question two, Linux CNC was a learning curve. Uh, literally, number three, Linux CNC is the best and that's why even Pathpilot, blah, 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 blah. Oh wait, this one's oh. different. On the topic of backlash, Linux CNC supports... <laughs> Uh, oh, you got more information on this one. Uh, 3D Kiwi says the Chinese double ball nuts have an adjustment in the center for the two. Yeah, it's, it's my understanding there's a set of shims there that you can adjust to tighten that up. But you know, actually, after talking to Dave at uh, Arizona CNC for a bit, uh, I don't think the ball screw is the problem, or the ball nut. Uh, even just a single ball nut shouldn't have fourth thou backlash, so we got something else going on. It needs some investigation. Probably the thrust bearing, but we'll get mm -hmm. into it. Let me guess, should we have tried Linux CNC? No, no, this, this one's good. Uh, G Cardinal says, oh man, this was just like watching myself talk for 10 minutes, word for word. <laughs> I'm sorry yeah. you had the same experience. It's, yeah. I hope they're working on it and I hope they do good work. Yeah. You know, it's, it's funny. I think one of the first comments that came through was basically saying, I have no problem with Mach 4. And, you know, There's probably a lot of people out there that have basically the test rig that Mach 4 was built on. Yeah, it's, it's but possible. But if you don't, yeah. then it seems to have a yeah. lot of troubles. If, you, if you're one of those people and you think I'm crazy, just read the rest of the comments. Yeah. Uh, RCCNC asks, uh, what did you use for the cylinder on the power drawbar? Ooh, good question. First, uh, for those of you that aren't aware, I recommend going and watching this video on the power drawbar. It's not, there's you know, okay. some, somewhere over there. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of good detail information on that. But we are going to have a future episode where we actually change it out for something a little bigger. So stay tuned. Cool. Uh, James Davis says, I'll swear if y'all have some BS excuse for not using Linux CNC, I'll unsubscribe. Sorry, buddy. Better luck on other channels. Yeah. <laughs> Great having you. Uh, Ian Foster says, this is fantastic. Works on my Mach 3 plasma table. Do we want to talk Ooh. about? That's, hmm. uh, that's probably a future episode. Uh, but needless to say, there is going to be a plasma cutting specific screen set coming out in the near future. Awesome. We're getting a lot of great feedback, by the way, of little things to change and some yeah. specific maybe edge cases that people are using them for. Love to see that, and we're, we're going to try and integrate as many of those changes as we can. Yeah, also, people have been sending us like lots of screenshots and things like that, pictures of them using the thing. Just blown away by it. Yep. Never mind the fact that some of you have actually donated to us. Yeah, thank you so much. Huge. Just thanks. Afterbite asks, uh, when do you plan to make an enclosure? <laughs> 
Should, was that on our list? Were we, were we going to make an enclosure? <laughs> I think I've got aluminum stuck in my feet enough that I have more aluminum than feet now, so... Yeah. It's actually going to be the next episode. I guess I should wear shoes in the shop. No, shut up. Okay, anyway. Bad, terrible idea. Yeah. Whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, this is going to be a good one. <laughs> Nomin Renfro says, Now I'm considering buying Mach 3 just to use the screen set and dumping Linux CNC. We did it, everybody! <laughs>On a serious note, I think Ryan and I need to go pack up for the SpaceX launch where we're launching people to space for the first time in like nine years from American soil. So uh, Doug and Bob, Godspeed.